This video will focus on the second topic in Edexcel P3. We'll be looking at the eye and sight problems. Within this tutorial, we will be looking at the main structures of the eye, making sure that we can identify them and we can label the eye correctly. Having a look at what we mean by the near point and far point of the human eye, and finally looking at some common sight problems including long and short sightedness as well as how they can be corrected. So the human eye. The eye is quite a complicated organ however there are some specific parts that we need to be able to name. Moving from the front of the eye backwards at the front we have got the cornea here which along with the lens focuses the light onto the back of the eye at the retina. Just in front of the lens we have the pupil which is the dark spot that you can see in the middle of your eye. This controls how much light enters the eye and is controlled by the ciliary muscles and the iris. The iris will contract and relax in order to alter the amount of light that can enter in through the lens. Both the ciliary muscles as well as the suspensory ligaments alter the shape and size of the lens. By altering the size and shape of the lens, the eye can alter where the light is focused depending on if something is close by to the eye or it is much, much further away. At the back of the eye, we have the retina. The retina is made up of two different types of cells, both rod cells and cone cells. These two type of cells are able to detect colour, light and black and white. Finally, at the back of the eye, we have the optic nerve. The optic nerve is the nerve that connects the eye to the brain, the eye acting like a small stalk pointing out of the front of the brain. However, the position of the optic nerve means that the retina is not complete and as such it provides us with a blind spot in our vision. The blind spot in our vision is constantly being filled in by our brain with what the brain believes should be completing that image. We will now look at how the eye sees things. In order to see things, rays of light must be refracted and then focused onto the retina. The retina can then convert this information to an electrical signal which is sent via the optic nerve to the brain. In order to focus the light on the back of the retina, the light rays must first be refracted by the cornea at the front of the eye and then again by the lens. These two refractions in turn allow for the focal point of the light to be formed on the back of the eye at the retina. With the range of vision being from around 25 centimeters away from the eye up to infinity with the eye being able to see images from very, very far away. In order to see things at different distances, the ciliary muscles and the suspensory ligaments must alter the shape and size of the lens. For objects that are a long way away, the ciliary muscles relax and suspensory ligaments pull tight, making the lens pull thin. The light won't bend as much as we can see here. The light doesn't refract very much and as such, the light is able to be focused at the back of the eye. For objects which are much, much closer, the ciliary muscles contract, allowing the lens to go fat. It gets much, much wider. 
This causes the light to refract more. So, what does it mean to be long or short sighted? If you are long sighted, then you are only able to focus on images that are a long way away. It, images that are much, much closer are going to appear blurry, and vice versa for short sightedness. For people with short sightedness, the light from faraway objects is focused in front of the retina. This can be due to the ciliary muscles not stretching the lens to be thin enough, so the lens remains in this fat position. Because the focal point is in front of the retina, the image that is seen by the person is now blurry. In order to combat this, a diverging lens can be placed in front of the eye which will correct the short sightedness. In this regard the focal point will then be moved towards the back of the eye as the light rays are spread out before hitting the lens. In people with long sightedness this occurs in a slightly different way. So if a person has long sightedness, then the light from nearby images can no longer be focused onto the retina. In fact, it would end up getting focused behind the retina. As the light cannot be fully focused, this means that the image will appear blurry. In this case, this is caused by the lens not contracting to, to be wide enough. So instead of being fat as it should be, the lens is too thin. This time, this can be corrected by placing a converging lens in front of the eye, whereby the light rays will already be converging onto the lens before being converged further so that they now end up focused on the retina. In order to correct vision defects, there are three major options employed by opticians. The first of these is glasses. So glasses, as we saw on the previous two slides, can be used to place the correct lens in front of the eye in order to act either as a diverging lens or a converging lens. Glasses have many advantages, for example, they are very cheap and they also last a long time. However, some people believe that they are ugly and also they do not offer a permanent fix to the eyesight problem. Similar to glasses, we can also use contact lenses. So contact lenses are a small lens that is placed onto the eye. Like glasses, these offer a temporary fix to the eye. However, they do not permanently alter the shape of the lens. Contact lenses are useful as they are exceptionally cheap and they are replaceable. As they are attached to the eye, they will also break less often. However, they do need to be replaced every day and can cause irritation to the eye. The final method that we need to know is laser eye surgery. So laser eye surgery is a surgical method which alters the shape of the eye. It does this by altering the shape of the cornea at the front of the eye. This affects the refraction that occurs onto the lens and hence alters the position of focus within the eye. Laser eye surgery is very expensive and carries with it some dangers of complications. However, it is deemed relatively safe. Unlike glasses or contact lenses, laser eye surgery offers a permanent fix to the sight problem.
a common exam question looks at the advantages and disadvantages of laser eye surgery when compared to using glasses and or contact lenses. As we looked at on the previous slide, laser eye surgery offers a permanent fix to the sight defect and is also seen as a relatively safe surgical method. It also does not rely on contact lenses being put in every day or glasses being worn which could be broken. However, it is also very expensive and requires the patient to go through a surgical procedure which they would not have to for either the use of glasses or contact lenses. In the next video we will be looking further at lenses including Snell's law and the differences between converging and diverging lenses.